First lesson, a reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you want, wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our, our own power or piety we've made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. reading from 1 John. 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, for that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On Thursday, at the Last Supper, Jesus knew he would be arrested, and he was. On Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross, and his body was taken down and wrapped tightly in cloth and anointed for burial. He was placed in a tomb, and the tomb was sealed. The women saw Jesus die. The soldiers confirmed that he was dead and then saw his body taken from the cross. The disciples, those who were brave enough, watched from a distance. And so when the women return from the tomb and report that the tomb is empty and that two angels had told them that Jesus is alive, the other disciples think that they are delusional. They are making things up or seeing things that are not there. Even after Peter and the others go to the tomb and see that it is indeed empty, they do not believe. Later that day, Cleopas and his companion are walking to Emmaus. You remember that story. And as they are walking, Jesus encounters them and sees that they are sad. They do not believe that Jesus is alive. As amazing as the women's story is, Even after Peter confirms that the tomb is empty, they do not believe that Jesus has risen. They do not believe that resurrection is even possible. Jesus finally appears, as we just heard, standing among the disciples. And even with all the messages, he told them that this would happen three times. He told them that this would happen. But even with that and with all the messages from the angel and from the women, they are terrified. They think that he must be a ghost. So Jesus shows them his hands and his feet so that they can touch the wounds of his crucifixion and know that he is flesh and blood. But even then, they continue to disbelieve and to wonder. Jesus is there, standing among them. They can touch him, see him, smell him, and they are filled with joy. 
The one they love is back. The one who promised them the love of God is back. But wait, he died. He was buried. We saw him taken down from that cross. How can this be? And in that moment, joy and doubt are swirling around within their hearts and their minds. If you have ever doubted the resurrection, you are in good company. Jesus stands among them. They see him. They touch him. They feel his warmth and the rough edges of his wounds, and still they doubt. If you want to believe in the resurrection, but you struggle, if you want to believe that Christ is risen, but in your mind you know that dead is dead, well then, you know how the first disciples felt. Even those who love Jesus and want with all their hearts for the resurrection to be real, even they can struggle. We know that something happened. And we know that somehow Jesus is still making a difference in our lives and in the world around us. So we do what the first disciples did. We decide that he must have been a, a spirit or a ghost or somehow God made these things happen. But not a resurrected human being. Then, Jesus asks for some food. Ghosts don't sit down and eat a meal. Spirits don't share in the appetizers. No, that's what people do. We sit down and we eat with family and friends. Sharing a meal is one of the most human things we can do. The resurrection is an unbelievable event. And yet here is Jesus sharing a snack with his friends. Now this is a paradox. It's hard to believe, it's hard to understand. We hear the stories of the resurrection and we struggle with our doubts just as the first disciples did. We struggle with doubt like the first disciples and like them we go forward with our faith and our doubt. We share in the joy of Easter even as we wonder. And here's the thing. We are a community of faith. And that faith provides a nurturing context in which we can live with our doubts. In our faith, we know that God is present in the world. We see it. We experience it. We can trust that when we recognize and honor the humanity of another, we also encounter the divine in them. Now, there is such a temptation to think of resurrection as a purely spiritual event. Jesus appears inside locked rooms. He appears after being buried. We try to rationalize this by imagining a spiritual, ethereal, or otherworldly explanation. But Jesus ate broiled fish. And that reminds us that he is human and the resurrected Christ is human. Now, there are two reasons why this is so very important. First, if Jesus is a spirit and not human, how can we ever follow him in his life? If the resurrected Christ is something other than human, why then resurrection life is not available to us in this very human life that we are living? And so Jesus ate a piece of broiled fish to show us that resurrection life is real life. Resurrection life is available to us here 
and now, not just after we die and go to heaven. And the second reason that this is so very important is that Jesus' bodily, the, the second reason that Jesus' bodily resurrection is so important is that Jesus did not appear as a spiritual manifestation. He appeared as a human being with wounds, with feelings, with compassion and love. The resurrected Christ in all his fish-eating humanity shows us that God can be found in our fellow human beings. As a community of faith, we strive to share the love of Christ. We have learned through experience that when we love generously and care for others, we experience love ourselves. When we offer care to the marginalized, to the hungry, the poor, the homeless, the sick, and those in prison, we experience an abundance of love ourselves. When we see and recognize the true humanity of others, we also see and recognize the risen Christ. We find Christ when we honor the humanity in others, and it all started with Jesus eating some broiled fish. We still have our doubts. The resurrection is hard to understand and hard to believe, but Resurrection life is actually available to us here and now. Resurrection life is what's happening in community and in worship and in outreach work that we do. In the, in, when we come together to do God's work, resurrection is happening all around us, for us and through us. So I want to leave you with a two-part challenge this week. First, I want you to live your life as though resurrection is happening all around us. Live your life this week as though Christ is risen and you are likely to encounter Christ at any moment. Live your life as though Christ is risen and you might just see Christ in the face of the next person you meet. Go into your week and your life expecting to see Christ. That's the first part of the challenge. And the second part is important as well. While you are looking for Christ in others, I want you to do your best to bring Christ to them. Share the forgiveness, compassion, generosity, and love that God so generously gives us. Share it with others. You will be looking for the risen Christ in others, and you will be striving to be a person in whom they can recognize Christ. Live your life as the resurrection is happening all around us. Because it is. That is what this community of faith provides. It provides this context in which we can recognize that the love and the forgiveness and the compassion and the caring and the generosity that we see occurring all around us day after day, moment to moment, that that is a sign of God's love. That is a sign of the breaking in of God's kingdom. That is what our faith teaches us. We still doubt. We still struggle with the details. And that's fine. No problem. The joy of Easter is real and available to us every day. And in this context, there's room for our doubts as well. And in those doubts, we grow together. We deepen our understanding. We grow in our capacity to recognize Christ in others. Christ is risen, and resurrection life is happening all around us.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, the stone which the builders rejected, God has made the cornerstone of a new community. In that name by which we are founded, let us draw near in confidence, saying, Lord, have mercy. The risen Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. May the church find in the scriptures healing, mission, and good news for all. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ showed wounded hands and feet to his unbelieving apostles. May we see the risen one in all the wounded of our world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our cornerstone, intercedes for us before God. Let us and all in authority heed God's call for justice in the church, in our community, and in the nation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We are saved by a God who is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Let us beg for God's light in those places which seem darkest. Let us ask that God enlighten all who inflict darkness on others. Let us ask that God shine on those who are victims of evil. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the power of Christ's name, we are healed. Let us recall all who need healing and all in the healing professions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Loving God, you have glorified your son Jesus and given him the name by which we are saved. Give us the courage to act in his name. Accept our praise offered in his name for we offer this prayer through and with and in Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. 
forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. At the annual general meeting, we elected two delegates to go to the diocesan uh, convention, and I submitted those names and was told we get to have one more. So we want to assert our awesome power. So if somebody is interested, please see me or any vestry member uh, or Father David, and maybe vestry members, hold up your hand so that somebody can spot you, um, maybe within the next week or so, and then the, I think at the next vestry meeting we'll, we'll uh, decide who that third candidate will be. Thanks. Good morning. If you'll take your bulletins right where we left off on page seven, there's gonna be something just a little bit different coming up, and I want to draw your attention to it. Normally, uh, in the moment coming up, the choir sings an anthem, then there's a pause, and then we all sing the doxology that we know and love. Today's a little different. You'll notice the instruction, it says, all join for final verse as presentation hymn. So the choir will sing uh, five verses of this familiar hymn, O Sons and Daughters, and then there will be a very brief breath, and then we'll all come in singing those words in bold that you see on page seven. We'll stand and join uh, in singing those words. We'll go back to normal next week, I promise. Um, coming up next week, our Sundays at Three concert series continues with a special guest organist holding forth on our mighty Hawkalter Cassavant organ that was just expanded last year, uh, Dr. Catherine Webb, our cathedral organist from Trinity Episcopal Cathedral in Portland, is coming down to play uh, what promises to be a fascinating recital with composers familiar and unfamiliar, living and long past uh, and one really special thing about that program is she's depicting in music um, a sunrise to sunset, and each piece has a different aspect uh, that should be really interesting. So do join us next week at 3 o'clock for organist Dr. Catherine Webb. I'll see you there. I have an announcement. Um, a week ago today, uh, our own... Um, Wendy Francis passed away, and we will hold a memorial service, a funeral service for Wendy on um, Saturday, May 4th at 1 p.m. Uh, so please do plan to come and celebrate uh, that beautiful life lived so well. Um, I think that's it. I don't see anyone else hanging out in the eaves. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, however you found your way into this place, whether you are rich or poor, whatever the color of your skin, whomever you love, whatever your abilities, you are welcome here in this place and at this table. There is food enough for all. Come and be fed.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. 
Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold what you are, become what you receive.
of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's heart and hands for this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.
Pues, 